All right, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a couple more that'll roll in, uh, but I think we should go ahead and just get the uh, uh, get this presentation started. Um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Colin Poff. I'm with the Long Range Planning Division, the Department of Community Development. So I'm the Long Range Planning Supervisor. And here to help me with the presentation today is also Jim Rogers. Hi, I'm Jim, uh, Long Range uh, trans long range planning. I used to be a transportation planner, but uh, now I'm in long range planning with DCD. Thanks, Jim. And uh, that's perfect for today because the, the topic of this presentation is capital facilities and transportation. Uh, some of you have been at uh, previous meetings, so you'll know that we've been going around talking about different elements in the comprehensive plan uh, from environment and climate change, uh, land use, housing and the Silverdale Regional Center. This is the last of those kinds of uh, public meetings that we're, we're doing. Of course, there'll be uh, a lot more uh, types of outreach in the future and meetings in the future, but uh, of these types of general uh, topic meetings, this is the last of those. And we're talking about the elements of uh, capital facilities and transportation. So here's how the meeting will go. Uh, as we have in the past, uh, which each with every presentation, we'll talk about kind of the uh, the regional context that we're planning in. So regional and county wide guidelines, um, the, talking about planning for growth, uh, the growth that's um, projected for Kitsap County, and then leading into the two topics: first, capital facilities guidance and goals, and then uh, transportation guidance and goals, and then as well as some existing conditions, so we can establish kind of the baseline of where we are and understand what we need to plan for. Um, and then uh, following that, we'll have, uh, there'll be a couple of survey questions. And we'll also have uh, breakout groups where we'll have interactive discussions and we have a couple of questions for you uh, at that time. Of course, if you have any issues or technical issues at all, uh, please reach out to Alex Jarrett. There's an email there uh, below. And this information will be up on the Comprehensive Plan website, uh, as, uh, as well as the, the presentation, the PowerPoint, uh, and uh, any of the other meetings that we've done are also up there as well for you to see. This is a slide that's been on each of our presentations and it's um, important to note. There at the bottom of that graphic, you see the comprehensive plan, which is what we're working on. And it's at the bottom of the list of, of, the, uh, of the planning framework that we're working in at the regional and state level. Um, the top being the state enabling legislation that we plan under, with the, which is, of course, the Growth Management Act, or GMA. So any uh, city or county planning under GMA needs to have a comprehensive plan with certain elements, uh, required elements within it, uh, transportation and capital facilities being one of those. Growth management also has one of, has a key concept called concurrency, which is that uh, as you plan for growth, you need to have concurrency of um, infrastructure to support that growth. So that's a key concept that drives a lot of this. And then at the regional level, it's important to understand that Kitsap is in a four county region around the Puget Sound. That's Kitsap, Snohomish, King, and Pierce County. And uh, that Puget Sound region uh, has something called the Puget Sound Regional Council. And they have a document that's called Vision 2050. Vision 2050 lays out multi-county excuse me, uh, policies uh, and multi-county population and employment targets. So any of those four counties, their unincorporated areas, rural areas, and cities have population and employment targets. Uh, and then they also, and there's also a uh, regional transportation plan. It's important to understand that there's regional transportation dollars that are implicated with a lot of this. And then there's countywide planning policies. Countywide planning, county planning policies are uh, made up of the, the county and um, the cities within and uh, the Kits, something called the Kitsap Regional Coordinating Council, which develops these countywide planning policies consistent with Vision 2050. And it's that guiding document for city planning and for local transportation funding. And then we have our comprehensive plan and the Growth Management Act requires consistency with all of these. So not that we're copying um, the, the goals and policies or or anything from these, but that they need to be consistent and not conflict with one another. So planning for growth for 20 years, uh, I say 20 years because that's the planning horizon of this comprehensive plan. It's called Kitsap 2044, so that's 2024 to 2044. 
and we're planning for a lot of growth in population and jobs in Kitsap County over the next 20 years. As you can see, um, population growth uh, projection of, of 70,000 people in that 20 year horizon, which of course has implications in, of um, this discussion for transportation and capital facilities planning. So capital facilities is an element within the comprehensive plan. Uh, the purpose to guide capital facilities planning, funding and coordination with other elements of the comprehensive plan. So there needs to be consistency internally with all of these other elements, such as land use, economic development, health and human services, parks and recreation, transportation. All of these um, elements need to be consistent and talk to each other. When we say capital facilities, though, we don't necessarily just mean roads and sewers. There are a lot of different types of facilities, um, non-motorized uh, sidewalks and bike lanes, transit, um, schools, of course, telecommunications, public buildings, and the like. So there are a lot of uh, capital facilities to ensure a level of service for. So the capital facilities element should cover the 20-year planning horizon through 2044. It also needs to include a six-year detailed financial plan, a capital improvement program that lasts six years, and that's actually identifying funding available for specific projects. Whereas we're also planning uh, not necessarily with um, the detailed financial plan over a 20-year plan, uh, planning horizon. The other element guidance is that it must address any unserved areas of the urban growth area as well as expansion areas. What that means is that we're looking at areas that don't necessarily, that are within an urban growth area that don't necessarily have the level of service that they're supposed to for capital facilities. And the reason that we say that is because there's an efficiency to providing capital facilities within existing urban areas and that they provide these unserved areas and that your per capita, you know, per capita expense for capital facilities goes down um, uh, the more that these uh, growth is consolidated in these areas. Um, that it should consider operating and, operating and maintenance costs before acquiring new facilities uh, and work towards implementation of life cycle cost analyses to ensure efficient use of natural and financial resources. And then the next couple of slides are just capital facilities goals. So when you look at a comprehensive plan, you'll see there are goals and policies um, within the comprehensive plan, goals being more overarching statements, not necessarily uh, directive strategies, but just uh, statements that we're um, that we're that we're uh, aspiring to and planning for. So those goals are to establish level of service standards for each facility and determine improvement ba improvements based on current and future needs. And that level of service term is a term of art that you'll see a couple of times in this pre uh, presentation, which just means uh, having a, a performance metric or a standard. So are your roads um, at a C or a B or an A, for example? Um, ensure adequate facilities are in place concurrent with new development. Maintain a financially feasible plan for capital improvements. Provide services and facilities to support adopted growth targets. Integrate social, educational, and cultural components to facilities when possible. Ensure coordination between utility providers to meet the needs of future population. Maintain and enhance utility service quality. Minimize environmental impacts of facilities and operations support and promote energy conservation, and support public and private efforts to extend high-tech services, including telecommunication. So at the broad level, these are the goals uh, that we're looking at. And the last slide here on capital facilities before we get into uh, transportation specifically, uh, is that there's a capital facilities plan. So outside of the element, there's, an, there's a standalone document that's quite detailed called capital facilities plan, inventories all of the service providers and the funding needed for all of those. Capital projects identified, um, level of service demand, and growth over the next six years and 20 year time frames. Again, remembering that six years is the, the financial plan timeline, 20 years is our planning horizon. So that brings us to a quick survey question here in the middle of our presentation. Knowing that the, uh, the economic consideration of um, of capital facilities planning is that there are limited financial resources to allocate, right? So in consideration of limited financial resources of capital facilities needs, which of the following funding priorities should be given the greatest consideration? Thanks for everyone's participation in this.
Just for a couple more responses. Okay, so if I pull this up here, so far it looks like um, we have uh, responses for all for all of these. Uh, the most being to uh, uh, to improve the existing system to correct any level of service deficiencies. Um, that have gotten the most votes. We also have a few for maintain and operate the existing system, a couple of votes for expand the system to meet the needs of a growing population, and then uh, a vote for make improvements that reduce future operating costs. Great, valuable input, thank you so much. And um, I'll go ahead and move on to the next slide and I'll switch over to Jim Rogers, who's going to speak to transportation. Yeah, thanks, Colin. Um, as we start talking about transportation, here are a few facts to think about uh, as we review that transportation element and to consider as we move forward and as we grow. Uh, the County Road Department maintains over 20,000 signs, 20 miles of guardrails, and 915 miles of roadway requiring over 1,600 miles of painted lane stripes. County maintains over 145 miles of on-road non-motorized facilities and more than seven miles of off-road non-motorized facilities. Kitsap County has 371 miles of water trails. The county spends about $15 million per year currently on transportation projects. And Kitsap Transit operates 37 fixed route buses, 35 worker driver buses, and four ferry routes transporting more than 3.8 million riders per year. A Washington State Ferries operates four ferry terminals and transports 8.3 million riders per year. There are 103 miles of state highways in Kitsap County. Just some interesting facts. So Kitsap County is, uh, is unique in that uh, we are part of two regional governance bodies. Uh, and the purpose of the transportation element and the guidance that we're given from PSRC and uh, the uh, uh, PRTPO, which is uh, Peninsula Regional Transportation Planning Organization, uh, is to guide transportation planning and design decisions for unincorporated Kitsap County primarily through level of service standards in coordination with other jurisdictions like the Puget Sound Regional Council and the Peninsula Regional Transportation Planning Organization. Um, we are the, in PSRC, we are a voting member uh, with uh, King, Pierce, and uh, Snohomish counties. And, uh, and this is where the bulk of our uh, state and federal funding is filtered through, uh, particularly for transportation projects. Um, we have the smallest county in that group. Now, in the PRTPO region, that's uh, across, uh, that, that includes Mason, Jefferson, uh, Clallam, and um, County and Kitsap counties, and, uh, and Jefferson. And we are the, the largest in that uh, group, but we are in, in they're in an advisory role only uh, role and uh, just for regional coordination purposes. The goals and policies of this chapter play an important role in other elements of the comp plan, including land use, economic uh, development, health and human services, parks and rec, and capital facilities. Uh, decisions made by those elements uh, can greatly affect future transportation needs. On the next slide, um, some more directives uh, through the Growth Management Act, PSRC, and countywide planning policies include a focus on these issues. Establish a multimodal transportation system through regional intergovernmental coordination. Uh, emphasize moving people rather than vehicles through support of high capacity transit. Continue Growth Management Act concurrency requirements and uh, maximize the efficiency of the existing transportation corridors before creating new ones. On the next slide, uh, this is a brief vision uh, for the transportation system. Uh, the residents of Kitsap County envision a 
an efficient, flexible, and coordinated multimodal transportation system, including roads, bridges, and highways, ferries, transit, and non-motorized travel that provides interconnectivity and mobility for county residents and supports our urban and rural land use patterns. Next, we'll look at some of the goals. Uh, this, is, this is a summary of them. I didn't spell them all out here because that would take way too many words. But basically, the goals are to provide a safe multimodal system for all ages and abilities in coordination with other jurisdictions, provide a system with flexibility to expand for economic development and national defense, ensure public participation in planning and understanding of the choices and implications of those decisions, and provide transportation choice uh, with an emphasis on moving people rather than vehicles. If we continue on the next page, um, design a transportation system that supports and enhances neighborhood identities, avoid first and mitigate negative environment, then mitigate negative environmental impacts, um, coordinate with our marine transportation systems for efficiency and reliability, develop non-motorized facilities primarily within the streets right-of-way, and develop funding strategies and financing plans to meet transportation needs. Now, go on to the next slide. You can see some of the transportation strategies as they're spelled out in the current comprehensive plan. Uh, strategy is to focus on safety, to improve level of service, to grow non-motorized access and reduce dependence on single occupancy vehicles, to coordinate with neighboring jurisdictions, and to recognize changing land use and demographic trends. So here, uh, uh, as far as tra transportation improvements go, we have two transportation planning documents that we are, are working through at the moment. Our current transportation improvement plan is broken into two time periods. A six-year plan uh, is a work program with funding identified and allocated through the annual transportation improvement program process. Uh, about $15 million this year, most of which goes towards maintenance of the existing system. And then a longer range 20 year uh, project list um, that does not have dedicated funding. Uh, this is a 20 year projection of traffic level of service efficiencies, this little map on the left that you probably can't see very well. Um, and is, uh, is has an associated list of projects to correct those deficiencies. And this is a 20 year projection and we'll be updating this, uh, this uh, analysis in this year's uh, comp plan update. Next slide. Uh, level of service. Uh, level of service is typically measured on an A through F grading scale. There in the right hand corner, you can see a kind of a level of service uh, chart where level of service A is free flow traffic and level of service F is stop and go traffic. The current uh, standards uh, in Kitsap County or for, 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 for the county is uh, C for rural areas and D for urban areas. Uh, in the urban areas are recognizing that a lower standard in urban areas is generally accepted as people expect that um, urban areas will have more traffic. As, so as congestion gets worse over time, we have to ask ourselves uh, if increased congestion is acceptable or not. And if not, how do we effectively and affordably affect a change in that trend? These tables show the 2016 and projected 2036 level of service deficiencies. Uh, in 2016, there were about 15 miles of roadway um, uh, lane miles that were not meeting the level of service standards. And in 2036, it was projected that almost 38 lane miles would not meet the standard. Again, this is an analysis that will be updated during this comprehensive plan update for 2024 out to 2044. So with that, I'd like to ask you another survey question, uh, keeping in mind that there's never enough money to construct all the needed transportation improvement and expansion projects. These are some of the questions we have to ask ourselves uh, when allocating a limited amount of uh, public funds to these facilities. 
So in consideration of limited financial resources for transportation projects, which of the following funding priorities should be given the greatest consideration? Preservation and maintenance of the existing system, increase existing system capacity to correct level of service deficiencies, improve the safety of the existing system, expand the system to meet the needs of a growing population, or make improvements that reduce future operating costs. And we'll give everybody a couple of a couple of seconds or a minute or so to see if they can come up with an answer. There's no right answer here. They're all uh, very uh, important priorities. Let's see if we can get another vote or two. All right, it's looking like uh, we're waiting towards uh, safety uh, with about 42% of the vote uh, and then increasing the system capacity to correct those level of service uh, deficiencies. Uh, preservation and maintenance followed by expand the, to meet the needs of the growing population. Thank you for that. And we've got one more question before we get to our breakout groups. This next survey question, uh, let's see, can we close this one out now? Here we go. In urban areas, which type of transportation facility improvements do you think will be needed the most over the next 20 years? Traffic flow and congestion improvements, transit service improvements, or non-motorized improvements? It looks like it's leaning a little bit towards transit and non-motorized. Oh, it's actually starting to balance out now. So across the board on this one. All right, let's go ahead and close that one out. And uh, that's uh, good for good, good discussion topic uh, for coming up here. So thank you for uh, doing that. And the next slide, I think. Colin, I'm going to drop this one back to you. Remember? Okay. Yeah, so uh, thanks for the presentation uh, there, Jim. Uh, if everyone is uh, able to hang around for a bit, uh, we'd like to do breakout groups where we'll break out into, depending on how many people we have here, uh, a couple of groups and we have a couple of set questions to go over and uh, discuss it usually makes for a good discussion and then we'll come back after that um, and summarize what was uh, some of the answers and then uh, that'll be the end of the meeting so uh, Alex could you uh, help us break up into groups here um, I, I, I'm not sure how many people we have I think uh, I think I heard we have about 14. I'm gonna go ahead and break you up into two groups okay okay you know, I think um, if it's is it, if the number is 14, Alex, I think we might be able to do this in one group. Okay. Yeah, I think we have about 11 uh, non-staff members. Okay. That sounds okay. like one group should be fine. Yeah, let's let's just try let's just try one breakout group this time. One second. Sorry, I'd already created two. Give me one second. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, here we go. One. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and send you. Thank you. Welcome.
Sorry about that. We got kicked out on our timer. Well, uh, so we we just had one breakout room. Was that right, Colin? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So I, I guess the time in their breakout rooms, but we. Uh, I guess we were, don't really table. need to report out and let everybody know what we just talked about, do we? <laughs> well, that's a good point. Yeah. It was, uh, we might uh, need to do that for the recording, though, that will be posted on the website. Uh, that's a great point because uh, yeah, we uh, the recording does not include the breakout rooms. And oh. I okay. I mentioned too for people that are here and also. Uh, uh, people that listen later that all, all these meetings have will have this information up on our comprehensive plan website but as always uh you know um always check back the comprehensive plan for future meetings and get in outreach that we're doing and sign up for our uh our notification system as well uh but jim i could do this real quick i could just i don't know i could share my screen and um, that'd be great thank you uh, you know it's it's difficult to go over the whole conversation but i'll try to just hit the high points uh, so hopefully uh, don't feel slighted if I skip over a, a comment or two, but um, see if I can share this. Okay. okay, so just a quick summary of what was discussed in our breakout room today. Uh, the first question is, what do you think are the most important capital facilities to focus on as our population housing and employment needs change with expected growth and why? Well, it's difficult, uh, you know, uh, for the public to look, be in a position to decide what's important, but then we uh, were able to discuss it more and, and came up with some ideas. Um, many of these things uh, you can leverage with uh, conservation of existing facilities and not just expand, but some of those you can't, for example, with schools, you obviously have to have enough schools to support more students. So some, uh, some grow with the population where more others should be a focus on conservation. Uh, for transit, uh, transit is stigmatized in rural areas, uh, often being kind of something that you need uh, if uh, it's an affordability issue. So it should be looked at ways to encourage its use more um, uh, and, and destigmatize. Um, also, there's some discussion about looking at things as interconnected, more of a uh, systems thinking approach, actually making a systems diagram. Things push and pull on each other, so they need to be adjusted relative to one another. So looking at our framework for capital facilities, is it linear or more of a system thinking? And also look at what data we're using. We need more data, um, you know, see what data is important, who is being impacted, and then how do we put a value on that? Uh, and that's very similar. Question one is very similar to question two. So we moved on to question three, um, which is about alternative energy production in Kitsap County over the next 20 years. What kind of alternative energy production do you think would be appropriate? Um, we had a greenhouse gas analysis, which shows that a large percentage of emissions come from the built environment. Uh, it's important to understand because we are an environment, uh, a marine environment here in uh, Kitsap County and climate change is gonna be a big concern. Uh, alternative energy is important for that. Um, so there's an opportunity space here with alternative energy. We need to be looking for more grants that support things like solar, et cetera. Next question is a little, um, next question here is about, um, what kind of improvements would you suggest for the uh, following facility types? Traffic flow and congestion improvements, transit service improvements, non-motorized improvements. So we should look at, um, um, I, I guess I got this mixed up. I accidentally copy pasted. That's question five. Uh, question four, um, do you have in front of you, Jim, do you want to read what question four is about the natural resources? I think I accidentally deleted it, but it was, uh, it's about uh, using our natural resources as a as another capital facility. Yeah, that, that was a uh, uh, seemed to be a pretty popular um, yes <laughs> to to include those as a natural as a, as a an asset in our natural resources. You have the question in front of you, so I can just hear. It. I oh the question itself. Yeah. Is it five. It's four or five. Uh, natural assets. So so natural resource assets include freshwater systems and streams forest cover, shorelines. Uh, do you think natural resource assets should be included in the capital facilities plan and formally treated as essential assets that are planned for, managed, and invested in to meet the needs of current and future generations? Thanks, Jeff. So the question was, yeah, about um, we have obviously all the typical capital facilities, but are we looking at uh, natural resources that way. And this is piggybacking on some of the work that we've done 
in a goal that we already have in a conference of plan to treat natural resources as an asset. So what does that look like? Um, so a comment was analyze what services we are getting from our streams, vegetation and, and shoreline. And that yes, it would be a good idea to add that to our facilities plan. Uh, and then if we lose that asset, then can we quantify which service we're losing? So have some data on that. Um, uh, a point kind of from the economic value of these natural resources continues to go up. If they become more scarce, their value becomes greater, right? Um, but also on the other hand, if we treat these as things that we're maintaining, uh, we want to make sure not to let it lose the natural part of the asset. Um, it's about preservation as much as anything. And then again, with that term level of service for natural resources, um, important to understand it's, it's, it's not just us that are looking how natural resources serve less, but how we can benefit them as well. So that question was uh, related to some of the work we're doing on natural resources and assets. Uh, on to the next one is what kind of improvements would you suggest for the following types? Traffic flow and congestion improvements, transit service improvements, non motorized improvements. Uh, a lot of these are related here. Um, a lot of comments about focusing on grade separation for bikes and cars, uh, it's actually unsafe. Um, so those, those transit, or excuse me, those non-motorized improvements need to focus on uh, safety and, um, and actually uh, better using existing roadways and, and existing right-of-way that could be um, expanded shoulders, more safety for bike and, and, and pedestrians, so that could require some money for acquisition and right-of-way. Um, <clears throat> we need to think about when centers are available for modes of travel, think about uh, figure out where people are going and where we can make it easier to use alternative modes of travel. Uh, focus on eliminating gaps in the existing pedestrian bike corridors. And then for transit, we need to consider the demographics of people that are aging in place and also younger demographics and help them um, when they live further out, uh, have transit available to access hubs or other transit nodes. Uh, and then lastly, we have a short discussion on funding uh, needs for transportation facility improvement. What would be a preferred preferred source of funding given the below. Uh, we talked about changes in our tax structure. Um, what can the county do at the county level? Uh, there's some discussion about the gas tax, which is a complicated issue. Creates an ownership perception, perception of the road if you're paying a gas tax, whereas uh, bikes don't you know, necessarily pay that ga um, gas tax. Uh, there could be a look uh, looking more into user fees, uh, tabs, et cetera, things like that as a funding source. But we should also be impacting or measuring how much impact we're having year to year on our non-motorized infrastructure. And we did not get to questions seven and eight. So I think uh, hopefully that summarizes the good discussion that we had. Yeah, thanks for that overview. Uh, anybody see anything we missed? Any glaring uh, <laughs> gaps in that discussion? All right, great. Thank you. Colin, you want, are we? Uh... Yeah, I think that. Uh, or I think we have. A, do we have a raised hand here? Uh, um, yeah, Beverly, really you want to add something? You know, this isn't actually. It was something I was thinking about during the session, but I didn't actually bring it up. But I, I wanted to ask. You know, you know how how we use the ferries to you know get over to Seattle and everything. I was wondering, is there any kind of like ferry on wheels where? Like people who live like here in Hansville, there'd be like the part of the transit system, you'd just ride your bike onto this thing like the ferry and it would take you over to Paulsbo and then you could use your bike and and there'd be parking spaces for your bike. But but for those places where it's dangerous and we still haven't figured out how to have safe bike um, places, are there ways, are there vehicles like that that we could have that would would move groups of bikers, like people who are going, you know, to over to Bainbridge to catch the ferry or to Edmonds to catch the ferry or Kingston to catch the ferry, but have to drive on these roads, but then they could get their bike on the ferry and go off or get into Paulsbo and go off. That's an interesting concept. I don't don't know of anything that's out there now that would solve that problem. Thanks for the comment. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. I'll add it to the notes. Um, so just time for just a couple more comments before we have to wrap up. But uh, Beth, did you want to ask something? Some well, just in response to Beverly's concept, I mean, I think it's a really interesting one. I think right now the buses are that conduit and people have fastened 
I don't know if Kitsap County allows this, but I see this in the city. It's people fasten their bikes to the front of the bus and then they hop into the bus, you know? And so that's the, that's the, that's the bike moving ferry, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. If you're using existing transit that we have, that would be the, the way. Great. Great. Well, if we don't have anything else, I think that can wrap up. And that's the last meeting on our uh, tour of meetings of different kind of topics. The conference of plan. Um, I know the, the um, presentations can be kind of general. I hope they're a, a, a great starting point for our conference plan update. But uh, all of these breakout rooms have been uh, really useful for us as well. So I um, really hope that we can uh, continue to be uh, in touch going forward. So reach out to uh, Jim Rogers or myself if you have any questions uh, really about anything, but specifically transportation and capital facilities. Um, but with that, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up this meeting and uh, really appreciate everyone's time. We should probably let everyone know too that um, about the third week of November, we're planning an in-person meeting to talk about the comp plan and kicking it off. Uh, so um, there's, the date's not set yet, but uh, keep an eye on our calendar. Yep, that's right. Thank yeah, November, hopefully have an open house in November. Again, thank, thank you all. Thank you.